Club Nouveau then, how did you, how did you, how did you then take the energy of being, of being betrayed and, and stuff? And how did you just find the crew to say, let's start Club Nouveau? Or were you thinking about doing it by yourself? Or no, well, well, me and Denzel Foster and Thomas McElroy were already working together. We were already writing together. I brought Denny in on Timex Social Club on Rumors. And then after that, we brought in Tommy to make the album that we were going to make with him. Valerie was already with Timex Social Club through Alex Hill, but she grew up with me. So we reconnected there. And she's like my little sister. Samuel was brought in by Denny. So once we knew that we weren't going to do Timex Social Club's album, but we had recorded music, we were going to use that music, and instead of finding another group, we were going to be that group so we could control it better. Okay. Okay. And the, um, the, the about who, who sings and stuff, how did that decision, who made those decisions about who's going to sing the, the well, lead? We brought, in Sam, we brought in Samuel and Valerie to sing. We weren't the singers. I only ended up singing because on Why You Treat Me So Bad, Samuel couldn't sing it with the texture that I wanted. And so I ended up singing it because I did the demo. So Samuel's voice was too rich and big to go, oh girl, I loved you, but you turned and you walked away. Yeah. And I really wasn't a singer, but that's how it needed to be sang. And that's how I ended up singing. Wow, yeah. I mean, that's, that's um, you know, the loonies really made uh, Post some royalties for that one with the uh, with their I have got five on it. That's that's yep. a big one. We love them for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean it's uh, yeah it's it's a massive hit. Even when we did our, our poll just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it's it topped all the tracks from from that from that era because I think they connected with the loonies. They remember the track back 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 then. So and it, and and people might not know Danny and 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 um, um, Danny and Tommy. And and yeah, from you know who who with um, and and Vogue and stuff. So you, you, they were under your stewardship back in in those early days. Yes. Uh, and, um, and Denny and Tommy, um, Kyrie from Young Black Brother Records with Mac Mall, Ray Love, Young Lay, Mac Dre, um, Brian Morgan, who yes. did SWV. Yeah, all those guys came. Yeah. They were all right there with each, around each other. So, so you moved to Sacramento, and because the music scene was there, a music scene prior to there was no music scene in Sacramento. I'm from Sacramento. Yeah. So, so when it, I left, so when I left Alaska, I just came back home. And you started the music scene because we all know about Tony, 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 and and, and everything from from that area, but. Is it after you? I didn't start. With, no, no, we always have had a rich. I didn't start the music scene, but I think I made the independent music scene something real and viable. Okay. Okay. Which, which, um, when you were doing when you started with with, with Club Nova and 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 the 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 records became was especially lean on me um you know another global hit and and you know so as i said i went to college in the states but a lot of of this but in the 80s i was in high school in boarding school in nigeria so a lot of those tracks cross into across the continent and were big hits back there did it did success seem did because i mean you know getting nominated and winning grammys i mean did you just think wow we are actually doing better than we expected or what, what was your thinking in, in during those times I, I gotta be honest with you I wasn't thinking anything I was working you know when you're in the middle of the work so I didn't so if there's anything I wish I could do over again I wish I could have been an artist with just the the luxuries of an artist but I was and I was the business who happened to be an artist and so it was a lot of work Wow. So when it happened, you know, you just, you know, you did the work and you moved on. And, you, and sometimes you almost think, okay, that, that happened. It'll happen again. But this is a very fleeting business. You know, everything changes overnight all the time. And you yeah. got to be ready. 
Did you get to enjoy it in those early days? No. I enjoy it more now. No. In, in those days, were the other members of the group able to enjoy it more than you? Yes. Yes. How did that affect the group dynamics then? If they're seeing you just busy working and then just they can see the enjoying the limelight and, and they can enjoy the success? You know, for me and Denny and Tommy, I think it had the most adverse effect because here we are partners and we do, and we all play an important part to the production. Yeah. But everything is centered around me. Um, I think because I'm the better speaker of the three of us and, um, and because I probably say the most poignant things. So we could all be three in a room and I, somebody interviewing us. And then you read the interview and you think it was just me in the room because they didn't really say a lot. And when they did, it wasn't bite size. It wasn't something that they could, that a journalist could sink into, Yeah, you know? And so, and if Val was there, then they would quote Val and me, but they wouldn't, the other guys were almost like they weren't there. And I think that started, that, that started eating at everybody. Yeah. And so Tommy and Danny decided they wanted to move away. Yeah, they wanted, they didn't want to tour. They didn't want to work anymore. They just wanted to make records. So, so they, so me to this day, it's me. Valerie and Samuel, we continue to tour together today. Yeah. But when they decided to um, to split and just say, we want to focus on being making records, um, did you then think, um, did, you know, when we're talking about the business side and, 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 and I think looking back, the people who write and produce and, and, and have the publishing tend to do better in the longer run within the industry, did you then think, okay, you know, how did you balance being a, a producer, business person, and an artist at the same time? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, ask the question again. So I think in today's, I mean, knowing what we know now, the songwriters, producers tend to be the ones who do the best financially in the long run in the music industry because of publishing and, 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 and things like that. And so when Danny and Tom decided, yeah, we're going to go do our own thing. We just want to focus on being producers and writers. Um, you then had a decision to continue being running a label, being a producer, but also being an artist. Did you feel as if one suffered more than the other compared to what Danny and Tommy would, ended up doing? No, nothing suffered. The only thing that, you know, it's just focus. Um, I was a young man and, um, and, and, and I did a lot of different things with a lot of different people. And, um, I just wasn't focused on, you know, on just production. I was focused on, so different things brought me different monies at different times. I did vanilla ice. Oh, goodness. You know, so I made a lot of money. I had four songs on the Vanilla Ice album that sold 20 million copies. You know, I mean, I was I was in a lot of different things. And um, and I just wasn't focused. And I was angry, you know, I was mad at the industry and I and I equated everything to a fight. I wanted to fight everything, and you can't. Sometimes you just got to be cool, enjoy the ride. Yeah. appreciate what you get to do for a living I you know I thank God that I get to do music as my living that I got to that entertainment is how I make my living that I get to do what I love to make a living I don't yeah. think a lot of people can say that I, I wake up in the morning excited about what the day's gonna bring I still make music you know I got a solo record I I got that's about to come out yeah called Soulful Bossa Nova that's really a a mixture of jazz and samba and bossa nova and R&B and little pop all mixed in one. And I mean, it's a great record. You know, I, I'm excited to see what it's going to do. I'm 59, but I still feel 19. Wow. I'm still excited about recording, about creating. The, um, 
because because we want to get to your solo album and I, cause I've seen the artwork and I actually it reminded me of um, something from Brazil um, so that type of but so it'd be interesting to hear more about that I, I guess during the 80s I mean the music industry changed the sound changed and stuff and then and I and I know that after you you know the even with Club Novo you know record labels you know when things aren't charting it's quick to drop how did you maneuver um did you then say okay you guys that's fine no more club no, but let me focus on you said vanilla no, ice I made, and... no i created club new boss listen if i did everything based on charts that I, I never cared about charting a record i cared about making music mm -hmm. so you can go listen to the Club Nouveau albums and you're going to say, man, there's some good music here. Yeah. You can listen to the 1988 Listen to the Message album. The 1989 uh, um, Under Nouveau Groove album. The 1992 New Beginning album. The 1995 Everything is Black album. The 1998 Collection series. Um, the 2015 um, Consciousness album. This, you know, there's some great, we've made some great music. I don't care about a chart. So I make music. And if you dig it enough to make it special to you, cool. If you don't, I don't care. I'm going to still make music. But, but the music business goes through iterations every two to three years. And so, and it's a young man's game. You know, and, and, and hip hop really, and, and things associated with that in a, in a certain conversation that takes place musically that I'm not willing to have. You're going to listen to my music and you're going to say, man, there's some heavy conversations happening here. Listen to what Club Nouveau is saying. I'm not, I'm not making WOP or, uh, or WAP and whatever some of these other songs are. I'm making real music. Yeah. So... No, I never let the music, the music business dictate to me how, what, when, or why. Yeah. I do what I do because I want to. Yeah. I invest in the stock market and cryptocurrencies and such so that I can do what I want to do in music. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview, loads to come. But thanks a lot for watching.